stories often reveal how tough circumstances often push us to seek ways for a better outcome. For Tuli Lekanyile, the challenges that came with acquiring her science qualification formed the basis of her story today. She and business partner Tande Gamsanga founded Nkatuto, an edu propeller that develops technopreneurs to use science and technology to make an economic impact. An idea is an idea and sometimes it doesn't need an A student. They just change, it. make it 360 turn around because they are motivated. What we are trying to do is change the mindset. Hello, you are watching Stories Untold and my name is Bule Molebazi. Before we get to the science of it all, here is a bit of a background about the two founders. Tulile Kanyile was born and raised in KZN. Her journey of strive to get to where she is now is the one that started a movement of inspiration. So I'm originally from Durban, born and raised. And then I moved on to live with my parents and went to Seaview Primary School um, and lived then in Sigland Gardens in Seaview. Focusing and realizing her dreams from the onset, she quickly began her quest to be in the science field. I had always wanted to do medicine. I didn't get into medicine, sadly. At UKZN, I was pending forever. I'm probably still pending in their system now, so I never got a response. Um, fortunately, I had gotten accepted for um, a Bachelor of Sciences degree in Pretoria. So, little tiny me in matric had to, or after matric, had to move to Pretoria and experience a new world and basically build a new world and a new life for myself without my little small family of four. And for me, I think that was difficult. I think 2006 must have been one of the most difficult years um, ever for me because my mom around uh, May, June, just before my first exams, first year, was diagnosed with, with clinical depression and was booked off work for like the whole, the remainder of the whole year. So that screwed me over, so I failed like majority of my exams in June. And uh, towards the second, um, the December exams, my grandmother passed away. So I had to go to my grand's funeral and come back to write supplementaries. I was screwed. I was screwed. And if you've been in a university system, you understand what happens to you when that happens. The university excludes you. Her passion was cut short, but Tulila searched for other opportunities and passion. I went to UT, so I got credited. Um, and what University of Technologies do is that to graduate, you need to you need to do a you need to do in service training. So I had to do in service training for a year. I had decided that I would wait it out until I found a way to go to the CSIR. But as God plans things, a friend of mine would go to a game somewhere in Hatfield, Pretoria, and sit next to a guy who ran a comp who ran a research lab or a research unit at the CSIR and the guy said tell her to phone me and I phoned the guy and I phoned the guy I phoned the guy until he met with me they advertised the position so I got in and that was my into the research field and I think that's being at the CSIR is the reason why today I lecture at the university it's the reason why I teach second year medical students um, it's the reason why I'm doing a PhD it is because I actually held it out and I said, you know what, because I want to be at the CSIR, that's exactly what's going to happen and I was deliberate about it. Being intentional about everything has always been Tulile's strategy. Finishing her research, master's and now doing her PhD, Tulile met Tandega as master's student, not knowing that there was a great destiny ahead of them. So Tandega and I met at the CSIR when I was doing my master's at the National Laser Center in Biophotonics. She was doing her master's in optics and we were cubicle mates. And I think we just got on, you know, um, we just got on. And then after 
our masters she went on to to teach somewhere else i went on to try find a phd sponsor <laughs> you know and um, she would then call me and say hey bruh um, I'm, I, I'm having a, uh, an expo. So she had done an, an expo at a school uh, in Leondale, close to um, her home in Pumula. And she invited me and, uh, to come and judge and to come and motivate the learners. And I don't know what happened, but we just got into um, making it work mode. It just fell into place. There was a time where like, I formulated a mini science show that will essentially highlight uh, everyday science in our daily application and just go beyond what the application is about and highlight the science behind it. So in my quest to create content, um, I started attending like ESCOM Expo and proposed that I would like to capture for them. Uh, unfortunately, that didn't go well. And then I was like, you know what, I'll do my own science expo. <laughs> And then I approached one of the local schools in my township, it's Leondale High, and I told uh, the teachers about encouraging their learners to participate in the ESCOM Expo because there was a misrepresentative of, you know, township learners in that kind of a competition. And then in the process then, we did a science expo with them in 2016. And what came out of it was that five of our learners that participated in the school expo, they went through to the the regional expo and then one of them made it through to the international science fair and the teachers were quite excited about that and the results and then they like they asked for more they like we want this again and then when the teachers asked for it again i was like yo there's no way i can do this on my own and also appreciating the fact that because we're having learners after school we need to provide food and all of that so then i went to tuli and i was like listen what we did last year the teachers wanted and i think maybe it's something that we can partner to do from simply helping science students for their ESCOM expos to launching their own science fair, Ngatuto loosely translating Choose Education was born. Welcome back to the show. Today we look at ways to make science and technology accessible to learners who come from previously disadvantaged communities. We follow the stories of founders of Ngatuto, a non-profit organization that aims to advance creativity, innovation and science in learners who come from previously disadvantaged schools. Let's see. Ngatuto is a non-profit organization registered by two master graduates, Tulile Kanyile and Tandega Mtlanga. Their journey was meant to be. We had to come together and sort of say, what are we doing about this? Because there's clearly a need for this, you know? And then we came together and we did the constitutions and registered for the non-profit and we tried to find other uh, people that we could um, register with because registering a non-profit in South Africa you need three people. So one of the frustrating things for me was uh, we do research and it never gets down to you know the layman. We do research, we go present in the society of the people that are in the same sort of intellect but we never take the research findings and say how do we now impact society and perhaps it's because maybe we don't have the business acumen as scientists and then we're like perhaps it would be nice to tap into the basic education level and actually merge the science and the business and we're like okay how do we do that then we formulated the 70 year process which is now our program that we do in Gatuto where we do the activation, we teach how to conduct research, then we encourage the learners to come up with innovative solutions by applying the research methodology. With, with learners and schools eager for this way of invention, Tandega found herself with more than they imagined. So, um, I mean, we are three years into this business and we've seen tremendous growth that we are now a national program. We are in five provinces and uh, we have about, last year we had about 23 schools in total and the number of learners that we've actually impacted in the program is it's quite a high number because we, at different levels, we interact with a different number of learners. But from the top of my head, I know last year alone we perhaps reached more than 8,000 learners in our activation stages and 
and when it comes to now teaching them the research methodology skills, just in 2019, it must have been more than 800 learners that attended our workshop. The experiments were blowing and Gatuta was even reaching out to rural schools. The learners are recruited um, through what we call an activation. So it's a promotional blitz, as it were. So it's going to the school and saying, hey, we're in Katuto and we're scientists and we want you guys to be scientists too and science is about solving a problem and um, we're going to teach you guys how to do that so if you're interested so we run competitions and etc so we basically sell our story to these kids and these kids must buy yes after hypothesis what they need after everybody like Siabashel and they and, and they must come us you know and then they come into the program, they register, we run workshops with them, research methodology workshops. It's a full day's workshop where we teach them methodology skills from um, how to articulate a problem statement and how to hypothesize or uh, um, conduct an educated guess uh, for the solution that you think your problem that you have identified um, uh, has or you'd like to develop. Thereafter, we give them the task to now use this tool, this research methods tool, to develop a solution, conduct research to a problem that they identify in their communities. We then go back, we consult with them and we say, hey, how's it going? You know, so that we can help them um, shape this thing and make it uh, and, and just advise them on, on, on how it is they need to go about it. But also that is for a lot of the kids, the first time they interact with a scientist or an engineer so it also takes up the shape of a mentoring session thereafter they have to showcase their projects so we have school-based innovation expos and at the school-based innovation expos we select winners at the school level then the winners go on to a finals and at the finals we select 10 projects which show potential for commercialization Ngatuto's X factor is they don't exclude any learner despite of their age or grade. So we want kids that, that want to be here. We want kids that want to make a difference. We want kids that um, are doing well at school, not doing well at school. So we don't have a, a, a grading uh, criteria. It's first come, first serve. You can come in. We don't have a gender requirement. Um, no, we don't have any requirements. Where we, we don't. We, and the reason, and the reason why is that an idea is an idea, and sometimes it doesn't need an A student. Nelia is one of the mentees and facilitators of Ngatuto. Her confidence got a boost when she first joined the winning team. So the whole master's experience involves us present, doing a lot of presentations to not only people in our um, platform or department to, but to also different stakeholders. So she came about um, this whole facilitation and consultation thing for Gatuto to help me improve my public speaking. And I thought, at, at first I was scared, I thought, okay, I'm just a village girl from Limpopo. I haven't addressed a lot of people. So I, I just thought I should take a leap of faith and go with it. And it was really fulfilling. Ngatuito started its pilot with Leondale High School and the learners and teachers are still pushing the legacy forward. Ngatuto is, make, is doing wonders in our school. You know, the Ngatuto, it taught our learners how to come up with ideas. I can take it as a hypothesis and then they are able now to collect data they are very creative. Actually, their creative skills is, is very, very, very excellent. They've improved very well. Okay, so the project we worked on was e tricyparos It's whereby we were combining e wheelbarrow and e bicycle to make a means of transport more easier for people who come from poorer communities. I started with Nkatsuto in 2018 when I was in grade 10. And uh, when I 
when I started with it, I, I didn't know what I wanted to do really, basically. But now I have an idea of where I'm going and what I want to do. But by now I've decided that I want to go into graphic and design. Mentoring and developing communities at large in Gatudo is not only benefiting learners, but everyone. If we're saying our kids must be taught entrepreneurship, what does an entrepreneur need? The first thing an entrepreneur needs is a laptop. So we must get them laptops and we must teach them how to use them, you know, and they must be able to use them and they must be able to, to use PowerPoint, unlike us who, who, who first encountered and had to give presentations at, at post-grad level. They must be able to use PowerPoint because what we are saying to them is in grade nine, as a 15 year old, if an investor comes, you should be able to pitch to them. What we are trying to do is change the mindset. So right now, the way this education system is structured is that we have a lot of employees. So people graduate to seek employment, but not necessarily create, to create employment. So what we want to see, we want to see the culture change and to change the mindset such that we are able to have people that will essentially create employment. So that's why we say we teach the learners to ideate. It's important to be able to ideate because that gives you a platform to actually identify if there's a problem. And we say once you've identified that there's a problem, then what is the solution? And in, in that space, your solution can then be able to create value. Value created, communities empowered, and dreams being realized, Ngatuto's testimonies are far-reaching and impacting. Welcome back to the show. Ngatuto is an edu propeller that aims to increase visibility of science, innovation, and technology to teach children research methodology as well as assist them with business models for their solution. Let's now find out from the learners how this NGO has advanced their scientific skills. <laughs> Ngatuto is an edgy propeller that has gone to show that black magic is real magic, reaching over 23 schools in the country and planning to touch all provinces. The edgy propeller now hosts its own expos. In 2017, I was at high school. I was so happy, but I was scared. But I was scared. Then here comes 2018. 2018, then. So 2019, I was doing the wireless traffic light. So I was amazing with that because I would never see any traffic lights around South Africa. So I used to see it around other countries. It was 2017. Then it came to the electric car. Then it came to the car. Then it came to the car. Then it came to the car. So it came to the car. It came to the car. It came to the car. First expo. So we can get laptop from there. Then at our level, we can take more techniques like that. My uncle Tuto, when they make a good job, so when we say go general electricity, so go G. Then if we say go general electricity, we are going to have the robot car load program. So from there, we can get like a we can get three or five star hotel in Saint George. So then we can go five star hotel Saint George, but we can go there. Or if, if let's say it's your idea, okay, I go to the market better. So in my case, no, I go down. So we decide to pay for it because it is pollution. So then we are going to go to or we are going to change our young innovation now into business. The two learners have by far exceeded our expectations, and this is how Tulile would like her story to be told. For me, it is. Seeing, <laughs> it's seeing a child be interested in something that has nothing to do with their curriculum and speak about it with confidence. Whether the facts are right, the facts are wrong, uh, the solution makes sense, but it's, it's, it's the confidence to, it's the confidence to go up and, and register for something, you know, that keeps us going. As long as there are kids who are saying, 
who send us messages on Facebook saying, can you please come to my school? You know, that's going to keep us going. So the, 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 the need, the demand is going to keep us going. Tandega says the vision is as high as the sky. I think I find great comfort hearing it being told by the people it's impacting. So if I hear Sabonga who's going to say, um, I started with Inkatuto when I was in grade nine and now I'm, at, I'm first year at UP doing computer science and this is how having interacted with Usis Tandega in the program has helped me to achieve where I am. For me, that's, that would be meaningful to hear this, my story being told in that way. And the teacher that moved from Leondale School to Ilenge School with them, she says that she wishes for more schools to get this opportunity. Like most of my learners, we find that when they started, they were getting like a max of about 20%. But finally, we find them there at 80s. They just change, make it 360 turn around because they are motivated and they can see which there is something out there. No, it's not just like in the school environment. So the mere fact that they go to ama competitions and they go to ama dinners and all that, so these learners, oh, they become so happy to such an extent that even if they don't win, they would still, the following year, they still want to partake because they know that there is something that they are going to get. And the mere fact that they get laptops, um, they get tablets, they are able to use those to make a research and all that, so they become happy. Thank so you. I'm very pleased that we have Tandega and Sistuli on our midst. Blessing has also now converted his old school bag into a Bluetooth backpack. Uh, Giving new light to new ideas is what Ngatuto goes by, teaching coding and many fascinating economic solutions. We definitely salute the Ngatuto team, from its founders to its facilitators. Our technological advances brought about by the fourth industrial revolution. In addition, the youth must be prepared for the requirements of the workforce of the near future as, as, as a result of this incoming technological era. And with that, we end our show here for today. Remember, you can share those stories of innovators, thinkers, and inventors with us using the hashtag stories untold SABC. Thank you so much for watching us today. Until next week, goodbye.